Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to be going over some skilling money making methods. So some of these methods will be great for you, a lot of you players who are trying to make some GP while you're actually training some skills. So this guide is going to be great for those sort of skiller players. Also, this is going to be a nice guide uh, to uh, prelude the new skilling boss that is coming into the game next week. Um, so definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think of this guide, if you have any questions. And also, let me know if you are excited or not for the new skilling boss coming next week. But anyway, I really hope you enjoy the video and let's jump into it. So starting off with our first method, we have hunting igneous jadinkos. Now these are located on Anachronia and you're going to want to be hunting them for their marble vines which are then used to make juju farming potions. So they are in demand um, and you are going to be making a pretty good profit on them. They're about 10k profit per vine and they are stackable so it makes it so you don't have to go bank. Um, so this method is really great. Um, the requirements are level 74 hunter and 64 herb lore. So not really too high of requirements. This is the method where you could probably complete it if you were sort of a mid-level player. But also recommended is the trapper outfit and 71 summoning. The trapper outfit does require level 80 hunter. So it is a bit of a higher requirement. Um, and also the igneous jadinkos will be able to make you right around 8 mil per hour depending on how fast you are with it and if you have the trapper outfit or not. The igneous jadinkos are located on Anachronia. You can go to the Anachronia base camp and then just north of there um, will be the igneous jadinkos. You are going to be catching them using the marasama plants. You're going to want 5 of them if you do have 99 hunter. That way you will be able to catch them most efficiently. Also an arctic bear familiar is helpful. It will give you a plus seven invisible boost to hunter and scentless potions are also really helpful when you are doing this as well. Um, but basically you are just going to be staying here and catching the igneous uh, jadinkos until you have enough. So if you do it for about an hour, you should be able to get around four or 500 of these um, and as I mentioned, the marble vines, they are stackable. So you can stay here for however long you want to get as many of these. Um, and then when you are done, I'm going to show you guys how you can make the potions for the actual profit. Now, along with the potions, you are also going to have a chance at getting some seeds. Um, so the Ignis Jajinkos will be offering a variety of different seeds as rewards. Um, one of them being the grapevine seeds, they are worth quite a bit, so you will make a few hundred K off of that every hour. Um, but another spot where you are going to be making quite a bit of money is from the actual Igneous Jadinko unchecked animal for the player owned farm. You do have a 1 in 500 chance at getting these, so you should expect to get one every hour or so. And they do cost around 5 mil, so that is a big chunk of change that you are going to be getting from this. Um, and then not to mention you are going to be getting that consistent profit with the marble vine as well. Now once you have caught enough of these Jadinkos and you're ready to make the potions, you will want to buy some Yugyun unfinished potions. Um, so you are going to be mixing the marble vines with these potions to make the Juju farming potions. Um, I do recommend you guys do it on a portable well. You can use your own or just check the portables discord or Port portables friends chat to find a well it will allow you to have a chance at doubling the potion so it is really helpful also if you do have a uh, botanist necklace this will give you a chance to turn the potion into a four dose instead of a three dose increasing your profit there as well um, so just use those few boosts when you are making these potions just to optimize your profit um, but then you're just going to go ahead and make them um, and you'll see that you are going to be getting a lot of profit from these. So from these vines I was able to make 36 potions, 5 of them being 4 doses. And as you can see I bought the potions for right around 360k or so and then I made about over 1 mil. Um, so you can say I made right around 650 to 700k profit from this. 
and this only took me five or six minutes to complete so you can see how you can get the eight mil per hour doing this I wasn't using the trapper outfit so I because I don't have it so that of course will increase your GP per hour but this is an awesome method um, and then including that uh, igneous Jadinko um, unchecked animal that you could get the profit per hour is exceptional now moving on to our next money making method in this guide we have big game hunter now I'm going to specifically be looking at the mid tier big game hunter um, that is the most profitable and the requirements for that is 90 hunter and 70 slayer however you can also do the low tier big game hunter um, the requirements for this is 75 hunter as well as 55 slayer You'll make slightly less money doing this right around I'd say six or seven mil GP per hour doing the low tier for the high tier you can make over 10 mil per hour up to 12 mil per hour doing it um, so I would highly recommend uh, the mid tier if you can there are also quite a few recommendations for big game hunter just to make it a little bit easier and more efficient um, one recommendation is the mobile perk so you'll be able to use surge more often and then also double surge is really useful as well um, that will allow you to uh, escape the dinosaurs a lot easier uh, bladed dive is really helpful for the same reason also the quick traps unlock is extremely helpful allow you to build the traps 30 percent faster this does cost 50 hunter marks however so if you don't have it you do get hunter marks for completing big game hunter um, so after 50 of them you'll be able to purchase this unlock and we'll just make this method much more efficient. Now, as I said, we're gonna be focusing on the mid-tier uh, dinosaurs that we will be doing Big Game Hunter for. So uh, specifically these three, and as you can see, I did uh, put the location to each three of these dinosaurs on screen as well. Now the best one to do for sure is the Corbicula Rex. This one drops the uh, Corbicula rex meat which is worth about 290k each right now um, it will always drop about one or two of them so obviously you're making 290k to 580k every uh, time you get one of these captures um, now another really rare drop that you can get from the big game hunter is the dragomatic it's worth around 19 mil right now although the drop rate is one in 101 so that will obviously help out the GP per hour as well if you get one of those. Um, but uh, if you are doing these mid-tier uh, big game hunter creatures, the money is pretty consistent since they drop their uh, meat every time and it is worth quite a bit. Now moving on to the actual big game hunter encounter, you're going to need the bait to start this encounter. You can actually store the bait in the bait box which is super helpful that way you won't need to bring all of the bait in your inventory and it will give you some inventory space because later on in this encounter you will be gathering some materials to actually do the encounter so to start the encounter just go to the bait box um, you can start it if you have the bait in your inventory now when you start these encounters um, you will have uh, roughly 20 minutes to uh, capture as many of these dinosaurs as possible um, also when you first start you're gonna want to start by gathering the resources so you can see that I'm gonna be cutting this tree for a while, um, I like filling out my full inventory with logs and then fletching approximately 9 to 12 of the spears. Um, that way you won't need to go chop down more logs later on in the encounter. I do find it just saves some time and it's the most efficient way of doing it. You'll definitely want to cut more logs than the vines, but you also do need the vines to build the scorpions. So start off the encounter by getting a bunch of the spears as well as keeping some logs in your inventory. I like keeping uh, seven or eight of them. Then you want to chop down at least three vines and then you can go ahead and start building the scorpions and the pressure plate. Now the scorpions, they cost one log and one vine to build and then the pressure plate just costs one log. Once the scorpions are built, you can arm them with spears. However, you will need to tip them with poison. So that is what these frogs are here for. You can see that there's three different colors of frogs, the yellow, red, and blue frogs. For your first encounter, you're gonna wanna determine which type of poison is most effective against the dinosaur. Um, so as you can see, I am testing out the yellow poison. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is get two yellow poison and one red. Then when you go ahead and bait the pressure plate, you'll be able to figure out which of these poisons is most effective. So you'll be able to figure out which poison to use by looking at the chat box after you 
uh, first arm the scorpions and bait the pressure plate. You can see that the golden poison damage did 30,000, so we obviously know that golden is the best because 30,000 is the max hit. Now, if you don't get 30,000 on either of the two poisons, you'll know that it is the third one, the one you didn't try. Um, but for this encounter, it is going to be the yellow poison. So since the dinosaur only has 15,000 health, we can only arm one scorpion and bait the pressure plate again and we'll get the kill. Now, this is where it becomes really fast. Um, since you already know the poison, the next encounter is really efficient. You'll just need to arm all of the scorpions with the golden poison or the most effective poison, and you'll be able to kill the big game hunter dinosaur in one shot. If you are pretty efficient with big game hunter, you should be able to complete three full dinosaur encounters in an hour so um, basically once once you uh, kill enough of the corbicular rex it will go into hiding then you'll need to go ahead and move on to another mid-tier dinosaur um, so it does work that way um, you can't consistently just camp the corbicular rex you will need to move on to one of the other two that i did show you um, but uh, you can do this for a full hour and you should make right around 12 mil per hour just off of all of these drops now moving on to the next skilling money making method. This is one of my favorite money makers in the game. It was one that I did a long, long time ago, but it's actually still a really good money maker. So it's making sacred oil. You can make about six mil per hour doing this method. And the only requirement is the shades of Morton quest. Also, it is highly recommended that you join world 88 when doing this mini game. Um, it is a pretty dead mini game. So world 88 is the uh, sacred oil or shades of Morton. Uh, world so you should have some other players doing this mini game that will help you do it um, recommended is having at least one kill on the Barrows brothers that way you will have the teleport to Barrows um, it will make banking really easy um, or you can have the in aid of the Meyer quest it does unlock a bank um, just south of the uh, temple so you can do that as well 70 plus combat is also super helpful that way you can kill the shades um, and that way you'll get some sanctity that way. It does make this a little bit more of a combat uh, money making method, but you definitely don't have to kill the shades. You can have level three combat and you can still do this method and gain the sanctity by just repairing the temple. Now, as you can see my setup here on screen, I do have the flam tart hammer. You really do want to get one of these. You can buy them in the general store at Morton. Also, I have 50 swamp paste, uh, 10 limestone bricks, and 10 timber beams, which you can also buy at the uh, store as well. And then I have uh, the uh, olive oil, which you will be turning into the sacred oil. You can do dose fours. However, they don't really buy on the grand exchange. So um, those threes is what I'm going to be doing. Um, but you can also decant the dose threes into dose fours um, if you want as well. A beast of burden is also pretty helpful. That way you'll be able to make more of the sacred oil uh, every trip. And so to start this method, when you are, are in Morton, you will want to buy the supplies, as I mentioned. So the 50 swamp paste, the 10 limestone bricks, as well as the 10 timber beams. Um, then with the rest of the inventory space, you can buy the olive oil from him in his general store. As you can see, I also have a bunch of the four dose olive oil in my beast of burden that I will be converting to sacred oil as well. So basically what you do with the building materials is that it will increase your uh, resources level. Um, as you can see under the mini game tab up top, as you can see, my resources is at 102, so it actually caps out at 100, so I won't be gaining any more unless it dips below that. Um, so uh, otherwise, um, if it is above 100, you won't actually need to do this, but it will always start out at zero if you haven't done this minigame before. Um, now you will be gaining Sanctity, and Sanctity is what you're going to be using to convert the olive oil to the sacred oil. You can gain Sanctity in multiple different ways. Um, the fastest way being killing the shades that will appear and start attacking the temple. Um, now, if you aren't uh, with other people, um, this is the best way to get the sanctity. However, you might encounter a lot of other people who are also killing these shades. Um, so the second way to obtain the sanctity, which is more of the uh, skilling way of doing it, is by repairing the temple. You also gain some crafting XP for repairing the temple. Um, so you definitely will gain some crafting levels if you are a low-level account, which is pretty nice since that is an expensive skill to train. 
So if you do have a full inventory of olive oil, you'll want to try and get your sanctity up to 100 before converting um, the olive oil into the sacred oil. Um, you might actually need to do this more than once if you do have a beast of burden, since it does use quite a bit of sanctity to convert the olive oil to the sacred oil. Now to start converting the olive oil into sacred oil, you will want to light the altar in the middle of the temple. Then you can just use the olive oil on the uh, flame and you'll start converting the olive oil into sacred oil. Also, sacred oil is priced really high right now. The four dose of sacred oil being priced at 17k each on the grand exchange and then the three dose is priced at about 13k each um, also this is a bit of an afk moneymaker it is a bit semi afk when you are gaining the sanctity so overall this moneymaker is exceptionally great also i just completed a full run of sacred oil and this only took six or seven minutes to complete as you can see it's priced at about 700k each so this is well over six mil per hour and it is an exceptional money maker because there aren't really many requirements to it you could literally do this on a fresh account to get the requirements in probably 10 hours and then start having a six mil per hour money making method um, so this is definitely one of my favorite skilling money makers in the game uh, especially for the fact that the, there aren't really many high level requirements for it. Now moving on to our last method, we have the Ophidian Incubation Scrolls. This is a really good money make method. Only one requirement, which is 63 summoning, so it's not too high. And you can make around 10 mil per hour doing this. This is a really, really great mid-level money maker. The only downside being you don't really get much XP per hour. So with this method, you are going to be casting the Ophidian Incubation Scrolls on regular eggs, turning them into cockatrice eggs. You'll want to do this by buying the Spirit Cobra Pouch. You also want Ophidian Incubation Scrolls, as well as regular eggs, and the Spiritual Prayer Potions. These are cheaper than summoning potions, so you are going to want to use these instead. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to be setting up my presets here. This is going to be really important. So make sure your preset looks somewhat similar to mine. Have the Ophidian Incubation Scrolls, as well as the Spiritual Prayer Potions, and then fill the rest of your inventory with eggs. Um, make sure you do have it set up like this. Um, then you can quickly load the preset over and over. Another thing you're going to want to do is change the Familiar Interaction icon. You will want to change it to Special Attack. That way, when you do hit the Keybind, you'll be using the Special Attack using the Ophidian Incubation Scrolls. So as you can see, my keybind is set to B, so I'm just clicking B and then clicking on each egg and it turns it into a cockatrice egg. Now regular eggs sell for around 2k each and then the Ophidian Incubation Scrolls, they're selling for around 1700 at the time of making this clip. Um, and then the cockatrice eggs selling for a little bit over 8k each. So you can see you're making a little bit over 4, maybe even 4.5k profit per egg. And you can do around 2,000 to 2,300 of these eggs per hour, depending on how efficient you are with it. This method is fairly tedious because you will need to be clicking constantly. Um, as you can see, when you do even run out of your uh, summoning points, you will want to drink the spiritual prayer potion to regain some of those summoning points and just speed it up. Um, and then when you do finish an inventory, you will want to go into the bank and then just reload the preset and do it over and over again. So this is a really good money making method. It is very tedious, but you can make 10 mil per hour pretty easily from it. And it only does require 63 summoning. So this is an excellent money making method for those mid-level players just grinding for some extra cash. Also, I do want to mention that the cockatrice eggs, they are priced so high and they always maintain their value because they are used for summoning potions. Summoning potions are going through the roof right now. I think they're around 30k each. So the cockatrice eggs, they are going to maintain uh, being around 8k each for sure. Um, so this is always going to be a pretty profitable method. However, that being said, I would advise just checking that profit margin before doing it just in case. And so those are all of the skilling money making methods that I have for you in this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more RuneScape 3 content. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.